You're watching Car Babble. I'm Ewan, and this is the Mini Cooper S Electric. I recently did a video talking about the interior, the technology, the space, and all that kind of stuff. But could you do the Italian job in a Mini Cooper S Electric? Well, that's what we're going to cover today the driving experience and the practicalities of living with one of these. So, if that sounds good, buckle up, and let's get into it. Let's talk performance first though, because this has 181 brake horsepower, 270 new meters of torque, and it'll do zero at 16, 6.9 seconds. And it feels every bit as quick as that because the instant torque you get from the electric motor driving only the front wheels, which is quite rare for an electric car, really does make it feel very sprightly. It's capped at 93 miles an hour top speed, so unless you're going in the Autobahn, that's not really gonna bother you, but you are not gonna notice that being an issue because it pulls so hard all the way up to motorway speeds, and the instant power you've got overtaking is an absolute piece of cake. Every time you want a little burst of speed, you just tap accelerator and you are off. It's just so good for that. And yeah, at least in warm weather, and this is about as warm weather as we ever get in Scotland right now. It's like 25 degrees at least. It's putting the power down absolutely fine. So even just being a front wheel drive car, I don't feel like this is really losing much traction. But it's not straight line performance you really want out of a Mini Cooper. It's handling and precision steering and just a small car that you can throw about like a go-car. So is the electric version as good as the petrol? Well, it's never gonna be quite there, but I would say it holds its own really well. And so in terms of Italian job type driving, yeah, it could almost do it. Certainly in dry conditions, you can go around corners pretty quick with confidence. It stays really flat and the steering's really sharp and it just feels really, really fun to drive. So you do have a really good blend of performance and handling with this car. The suspension is firm, riding on 17s in this top spec, but it's not overly firm. And so I don't feel like as much as it's bumping about a little bit, it's not a real problem. Refinement's all right. I wouldn't say it's amazing. I do hear a lot of noise from the tires. Um, I wouldn't say the insulation on the uh, windows and stuff is amazing, but it is an electric car, so it's never going to be that loud anyway, so it's acceptable. Visibility is really good, you've got massive wing mirrors, don't hear a lot of noise coming from them either, and yeah, small interior mirror with a big bezel which doesn't look great, but in a mini I'll forgive it because it's all just quite funky in here. But visibility all around the cabin is really, really good. And overall, yeah, I just feel like I can see everything. So no problems with that. The rear view camera's not the most high res, but I can forgive that. It, it's not gonna be difficult to park, that's for sure. So I'm mostly doing 40 to 60 miles an hour on country roads, and that's where I'm finding the suspension's not too bad. But certainly the slower I go, the more I'm noticing the bumps in the road. So if you were driving this as a city car, yeah, that could be a bumpy ride. It's got one pedal driving as well and two stages of regenerative braking, which is great. So you are gonna put some energy back into the battery, but yeah, it just takes the strain out of driving so much and you know, you're only using one pedal now and it's just fantastic. The sound system in this car in the level three spec with the Harman Kardon is absolutely banging. Really good sound system. And I don't know if it's because it's such a small car, but there's really cool funky looking speakers everywhere. And yeah, it really sounds fantastic. So they've, they've nailed that. That is punching way above its weight for this class of car. and it's a big butt. Um, the owner of this car kind of wants rid of it. Um, she doesn't drive it in winter or in wet and slippy conditions because she's had a few near-death experiences where she's gone around a corner and the car has not turned. And it's a mixture of acceleration in a corner and braking in a corner from what I can see or from what she's told me, but I can't really test this properly because it's one of the hottest days of the year in Scotland. And so yeah, it's ideal conditions for this car. But basically she's lost control and grip and the car has just not been able to take the corner. And a couple of things that could be the problem there. One is this is a heavy car anyway, when it's front wheel drive, front motor, 
summer tyres, instant torque from an electric motor. So if you put the, a bit of acceleration down and you're struggling for grip, that could be a real problem. And I've always thought that's a big risk with front or rear wheel drive electric cars in bad conditions. But the other thing is, it's just so heavy. And I just had an experience there where I did a wee turn on a gravel path and I was doing like two miles an hour and I braked and the car skidded. Um, it literally just front wheel drive, turned the wheels and it just kept going. So my guess is the weight of this car at the front is potentially a real problem when you've got iffy traction. So yeah, if you live in Scotland or anywhere that has cold climates, that's a real problem. But another thing that's really a problem for the owner is this car only has a 32.6 kilowatt hour battery and that's not a big battery and its claimed range is 145 miles but the owner says in summer months she gets about 100 to 110 in the real world and in winter I uh, hope you're sitting down for this about 80 um, it is pretty cold up here in winter so that is always going to affect the range but 80 miles I mean there are plug-in hybrids that can do half that and they've still got a petrol engine backing them up so that is really really poor in terms of range and so if you don't live in the city and you don't have access to a charger to you know regularly charge it fast not like a three pin because that'll take you overnight easily um then that's going to be a real problem and yeah you're not going to be able to go long journeys at all in this thing before you're going to need to charge it again and therefore it just completely limits what you can get from this car i got a real semi about good seats to be honest i i just love a comfy seat in a car and i just find it inexcusable when cars don't have them especially expensive cars or top spec versions of cars but this seat is really really comfy it hugs you in so well in the corners and it's soft leather it's got thigh extension it's manual adjustment but I don't really care it's just a really nice seat and so that if you could actually do long range miles in this yeah it wouldn't be a problem to sit in this warranty is okay it's not the best and it's not the worst you get three year unlimited mileage so that's good Whereas some of his competitors get um, five years um, and others are like three years plus 60,000. So it, it's kind of middle of the road there, but certainly a uh, Renault Zoe or a uh, Peugeot E208 does have the edge in terms of, of warranty. But yeah, it, it's good enough really. And so I don't think you're gonna have a huge amount of problems with this car, particularly being an electric car. Reliability is pretty good though. In fact, it's above average. So that is really good to know, particularly being a German product under the skin. But it is based on the BMW i3, however, that's been around for a long time, so it's very tried and tested, and so that might have something to do with it. It doesn't score five stars on the Euro NCAP safety rating, it only gets four, so it's not the safest car in the world. And based on what my uh, friend says that gave me the car to borrow, um, yeah, that sounds about right. There is just something kind of special though about this Mini. I, I can't quite put my finger on it, but it's the funky design, the sort of history of Mini, the fact that they've brought all that forward into this electric one and kind of kept the traditions of Mini, but made it electrified. And it's just got such a unique looking interior and yeah, it just feels quirky and just totally different to most other cars. And so from that point of view, particularly if style is important to you, then there is really no car, I think in the segment that's gonna beat this. So guys, I hope you find that useful. Um, obviously, there's a lot of things that are great about this car, but there's a couple of fairly major flaws with it as well, uh, particularly from the video I've talked about today. The range, yeah, that's a deal breaker for a lot of people, I think, if you don't do anything other than short journeys and have access to charging regularly. And yeah, the whole thing about the, the, the safety in winter, that's something that I wish I could explore more to verify, but I can only really pass on the feedback of the owner. However, I kind of feel like it was important to tell you that because if you do live in winter conditions, you really want to make sure you've tested this car before you drive it. And yeah, in those kind of conditions, ideally, so you can see for yourself if that is going to be a problem. But I have a feeling that that will be. So those are my thoughts, guys, though. Otherwise, please do let me know yours in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe because there's heaps more coming up on the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.